Now that we've explained a bit about the case, we're going to use it to uh, apply Monte Carlo on it. As you saw that the, the, the best case and the worst case scenario are two extremes, we want to have more information. And of course, there are so many interrelated elements that it's, it's, you cannot solve this intuitively. So we're going to use the Monte Carlo method. So what you, we've already prepared some stuff in the second tab. The first thing we've prepared are these six columns, which actually indicates um, uh, a parameter and uncertainty we have uh, for each. We, for example, don't know if the gas will produce. We know that there's a 10% chance that it will not produce, so there's a 90% chance that it will produce, right? Um, there is the gas quantity. So while we don't really know how many uh, quantity there will be and <clears throat> to because it, it's gas uh, we actually need a quite strange uh, distribution called the log normal distribution in most cases you will not use a log normal distribution but with the gas you do there are several uh, complications with that like you need to calculate the, the, the logarithmical mean and standard deviation which is a quite complicated uh, formula so it's already given over here but like I said it's very rare that you should use something as log normal next thing that's uncertain is the total well cost so normally it's something uh, of uh, 160 thousand dollars um, the cost is expected to be a normal distribution the BTU content and we actually uh, take uh, a triangular relation there. So if you don't remember when you need to use a normal or a triangular, you can actually have a look in the course. Those are explained. So the normal is when you when you know that it's a normal distribution. Triangular is when you have only the 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 minimum and the maximum point over here, minimum and maximum, and you know one point between. So we made it up this way. Uh, we made another normal distributions for the deflation and another triangular distribution for uh, the decline. So the decline, that's again over here. Uh, it's, it's a value over here that changes uh, the decline over, year, over the years. So those are all the variables, right? We've calculated several of them. So for example, that this is just a random value here, but then below we have the formula. So the formula is, uh, well, you check if it's bigger or smaller than one, and that means that you have uh, gas or not. And in a similar way, we, we want to uh, have the inverse of the, the logarithm here, which is a little bit more or less the same, like, the one of the normal distribution so it's normal inverse log inverse and over here this function you can find in the theory it's a quite long formula uh, which you need to calculate the triangle value but as you now have the formula you can actually just copy them and apply them to your own case again normal distribution we need the inverse of it and if you do that you kind of have like one um, case so the next thing we want to do is populate, in this case, our 500 simulations. So it's 500. And um, if you saw exercise six, we used some tricks to, to like fill the whole population. Now in this case, it's gonna be a little bit trickier. We're going to need to use the macro we've seen in, um, what's it? Uh, exercise four or something, I guess. So, you need to go to the developer tab, and we already enabled the macro, so if you click on macro, you have the hyper table here, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do um, is make all these random calculations, right? So if I just would have select this one and, and drag it over here, they will all be one, because this random function is not recalculated, right? Remember that if I refresh, those numbers should be changed, but if I just drag it over here because the number over here is fixed the random will actually not recalculate and 
the trick we used uh, in previous exercises that we put the random over here but you see with uh, oops, the triangular that you actually need the value of the the random function the 11 here and here and here and here so it's a little bit uh, so you cannot do that you could actually make another macro for it but come on that's a little bit complicated so we are going to hack or well let's say um, use the hyper table uh, a little bit so normally the hyper table works with input in this case we're gonna put a little trick we are not gonna give any input we are only gonna use the output variables to to make those random so input i just put here on an empty cell run says that cell is good any cell is good right it should be an empty cell okay and then we take the output range which starts from here so over here it start, that's the same formula as in this line so if you look at in this line you will see the formula and what we need to do is we need to drag um, all 500 of our simulations which dun, 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 it's gonna take a while but it's gonna take even longer to make it to run the macro dun, 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 dun. Yep, it's stupid the thing is I've tried to uh, change it manually but it seems that the macro so if I just would have uh, entered it over here the macro gives an error so somehow it just looks at the selected thing and not really the input here so it's a little bit bad everything is a little bit buggy right so if when I press ok oh that was pretty fast it calculated so it made our simulation and now you see over here for example that from time to time we don't have any gas and you see all the changes in our in our variables now the first thing you see still need to notice is that this first line is still uh, our formula so that little trick we used already before what i'm going to do is i'm gonna take these and i'm going to uh, copy them and do a special paste so that we only have the values paste only the values and not the formula i want to do that because what now that i've created all the and well let's just do it first now that i've created so all the all the simulations so now this one is also just a simulation i want to use this input again with our hyper table to create to calculate the uh, the payback period internal return both of them you remember that we have one calculated after taxes and one before taxes and the net present value right so that's the next thing we're gonna do so now we do actually have an input range right remember that the first thing you need is the name of the variables so in our case so this for example is uh, production gas you will see that this value over here is called production gas so we need the real values of the case to use them in the simulation the first need to be the function if you don't remember just look at the screencast about hyper table and yeah we need to run hyper table first right run it so as input now we're gonna take everything so also the 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 first line we didn't use that in the uh, the first time we create all the random values but now we need also that line still here just same nothing and almost there we go that's our input range okay and now the output range back to the top and again over here the first line are our real values we have in in the cash flow so now we take the first line and then we go all the way down You may have noticed that uh, in the right top uh, we have this minimum, maximum, average and so on. Um, I've already prepared that part as well. It will actually look at the table we are going to create right now uh, and take out the, the wanted values. But I'll show you in a sec. 
maybe more than a sec now that there are actually inputs. Okay, let's hope this works. Again, that's pretty fast. And look at all the values, right? So now the whole simulation run, you see that over here, of course, there was uh, no gas production. So of course the payback period, everything should be negative. Now I see that those values haven't been updated. So let's try to refresh. Nope. Let's try to do it this way. The max should be okay, but aha. Hmm. Um, I guess that's probably because of all these values. So let's just take them out. Not really sure why it's doing it. So let me just take one column first and just remove all the diff divided by zero, which is of course an error because you cannot divide by zero. Sometimes you really need to go over the code and clean the code a little bit. Look at the simulation, see if everything is okay. Oh, that was a value. Probably I can do a search. Can't I do a search? Let's see. Replace. Yeah, wait. It's gonna be maybe saving time. Replace. Okay, copy. Find and replace. Hope it works. Find and replace by nothing. Replace all. 44 instances. Okay, close. Hmm, should have thought about it earlier. And I'll see if I can. There you go. See? So, because there were these values, these errors, so we're gonna do that again. Find. I'm just gonna say I'm gonna replace that with nothing. Replace all. 182. That was a lot more. And now I just refresh. And there we've got all our values. Hmm, negative internal rate of return. That's kind of strange. Why is there a negative? So there are negative internal rates of return, which I kind of find strange because I thought it was always a positive number. Okay, well, you could actually then start looking a bit deeper in those data, figure out what's going on, why can there be stuff that's wrong and so on. So what what's this table? We just um, already created um, an array. Now I didn't include the first one, why not? Because that's still our function, but I mean, it's one value on 500, it wouldn't make much difference if you include it. So what we then just do is find minimum values. So the first thing I do is find all the minimum values, but remember, in this case, the payback period, uh, the minimum value of the payback period is actually the best case we want. So in the simulations, you see that the minimum uh, months, this is in months, right, is 14 months, which is a lot less optimistic than uh, our, what was it, uh, two years? No, that's, well, that's, that's, that's very optimistic. Uh, our, our best case over here was two years, right? 24 months. So see actually that the median is still on 24. So uh, the case we had to start with seems to be pretty reliable. So the next thing we could, for, for example, do is now create histograms out of this, which you could actually do with another function or do manual. I'm not gonna do that right away. I'm just gonna first keep on looking at these values. So the minimum value 14 months, that's very good. Maximum value is uh, 40 months. That's still less than three years, right? So I think we should invest. 